stock fell 15% last week. That was its worst week since March of 2020. Elon Musk tweeting at Bernie Sanders. So Bernie Sanders had tweeted about um, taxes here, saying we must demand that the extremely wealthy pay their fair share, period. And Elon Musk fires back, I keep forgetting that you're still alive. He should, He also mentioned that he would be probably selling some more of his shares, or he might be selling more of his shares. He sold $7 billion worth of his shares last week. Remember when, when Musk tweeted about his stock being too high? Maybe Elon's happy to see the stock price go down if he thought it was too high then. Tesla billionaire Elon Musk got salty with Senator Bernie Sanders on Twitter yesterday over the issue of taxes. This comes after Musk dumped over $6 billion in Tesla stock at the end of last week. That amounts to less than 4% of his ownership in the company. Elon Musk is obviously sort of eccentric and that's part of his brand and his Twitter account is always weird and jumping around and it does really affect the the prices and it, it actually really has an impact on the valuation of his company he needed to sell stock like he needed he needed uh, access to to that capital and so he was going to sell it anyway and he assumed his people would be like yeah sell it and if they say no he can still sell it it's not like he can't and by by allowing his fan base to weigh in on whether or not he should sell it, then it looks less strange when all of a sudden he's dumping, you know, a massive amount mm -hmm. of his stock. A lot of takers actually sh are, should really love, like, Democratic establishment politicians, like the Chuck Schumers of the world, like the Nancy Pelosi's of the world. They mm -hmm. actually really love big government leftists because they take a lot. They get a lot of subsidies from big government programs, and the more big government programs we create, the more there is for them to take. If, if that had been polarized differently, it's that buying, and it very easily could have polarized around the idea that the only people who are going to get electric vehicles are liberals. Tens of millions of people who otherwise would have bought electric vehicles because it's smarter and, and, and like they're more efficient and you know, the climate change implications would never have even considered them. So if, if Elon Musk's Twitter account is driving right wingers to buy electric vehicles to own the libs, you know, it's worth it. Last week, uh, Musk insulted Oregon Democratic Senator Ron Wyden on Twitter. Uh, after the senator called for a billionaire's income tax, but then something else happened. Uh, Wyden's son came to the defense, but not of his father, but of Musk, saying that since most legislators have never built anything in their lives, it's easier to haphazardly try and tear stuff down. The reality is I have an enormous amount of respect for my father. He's done a lot of great things for this country, whether it be for senior citizens, uh, the disabled, the environment. People come to this country to build amazing businesses, and I want that to continue going forward. You do think it's fair that its value has increased significantly over the last 18 months? If you look back at COVID, COVID was very kind to companies that were young, fast growing. And if you were building a, a company had to be a perfect winner from COVID, it would have been Tesla. I think it's quite clear that, uh, that Tesla is one of the winners from COVID. That said, though, at a trillion dollars, you're pricing in some incredible success into that market gap. The pricing metrics have never worked. So if you use PE ratios or EV to sales, Tesla's always looked expensive. But it's always about valuation. The question is how big you think the story will get. The, the revenues will rise to a trillion in a decade. The margins will be 16%. And the reality is there is a plausible pathway there. They have to make Tesla one of the greatest companies in the face of the earth, but there are people who are true believers. And, but at the same time, at the moment, Tesla is a mood and momentum stock. It's driven by near-term forces, which have nothing to do with that. I mean, right now, it's uh, Elon Musk's uh, decision to sell stock that might be driving what's happening on a day-to-day -day basis. What did you think, first of all, about 
Rivian, which now has a market cap north of $120 billion with the sales of about 150 cars. It, the Rivian IPO really, uh, really was fascinating to watch. Unlike Tesla, which has, it, which essentially had the EV market largely competitor free for years as it grew, Rivian comes out and it, it'll face intense competition right out of the gate. But with $12 billion of cash just raised, Rivian can weather the storm for three or four years. Tesla has been the beneficiary of, of government spending for a very long time, too. The question was always, when could t Tesla make money without those government subsidies? Yeah, there are kind of two ways the government's putting its thumb on the scale. The first is with higher consumer subsidies for unionized manufacturers versus lower subsidies for non-unionized manufacturers. Even though the data seems to show that non-unionized EV factory employees make more than their counterparts at union uh, at union factories the additional subsidy that's in this bill is a 30 percent business tax credit for ev purchases by companies and that's a huge benefit for companies like amazon uh, and this might incent tesla to pull production of its semi-truck forward is that all based on this same sort of fleet sales do they get a 30 percent discount so maybe they pull, pay full price to tesla but they get to write off some of it i uh, also sees that it needs to electrify its fleet really refresh its brand. And it was a it was a smart move by Mark Fields and his team to to in one fell swoop really hit the headlines uh, uh, with electrification of their fleet. So with many countries banning combustion vehicles after 2030, uh, the EV market can grow by 25 times. Uh, and so I think investors are looking forward to what the market size could be in terms of the addressable market. The EV manufacturers have more of an Apple-like model where they sell a car but they get recurring revenue off of that car and they're turning these cars into recurring revenue machines. So they sell a car and they could make a few thousand dollars a year for the ownership of that car. It runs, it looks cool. They're, yes. they're shipping some, but it's not, I mean, this is not mass market stuff yet. No, this is a luxury vehicle, isn't it? It's up two and a half percent. So, you know, Musk may be not too pleased about, about that news this morning. I'm definitely a status symbol, right? And it can be a selling tool for some of these cars. Rivian, which went up another 15% today. It's, it's been up every day it's gone public. This is now a $130 billion stock that doesn't have sales. If I were a conspiracy-minded person, I'd, <clears throat> I'd say Elon Musk invented Rivian to make Tesla look cheap. I mean, relative to Rivian, every company in the face of the earth is cheap. One is, in addition to being in the electric car business, which right now gives you a boost, it's the Amazon stake. There's this magic of having Amazon involved in your company that seems to push up the market cap. The other, I think, is a fear of missing out. For those people who look at Tesla at a trillion and say, I wish I'd bought Tesla 10 years ago, Rivian seems to be the next train leaving the station. I think it's a mistake to do it that way. But that doesn't stop investors from jumping on what they think will be the next Tesla. My fear is not that they're building in 100 percent, but 150 percent of market share. That's my real concern, is not only are they believing that every car sold will be an electric car and that the traditional automakers will disappear, but if you add up the expected revenues you will need from these remaining electric car manufacturers, you're almost building in the expectation that people will buy twice as many cars 10 years from now as they will do now. And if you bring in automated driving and the other trends, it should be pushing in the other direction. We should need fewer cars, not more cars.